Welcome back to the weekend. The Biden-Harris campaign is pouring cold water on any notion President Biden is getting out of the presidential, the presidential race. But the New York Times' editorial board's uh, call for Biden to step aside. A campaign aide responded by saying the last time Biden lost the paper's endorsement, it, quote, turned out pretty well for him. Since the debate, the president has been hitting the trail from North Carolina to New York, addressing concerns over his performance. Joining us now to discuss Biden strategist Anita Dunn. She is here speaking in her personal capacity. Uh, greetings, Anita. Let's just yeah. play. We've talked a lot about what the president said in Raleigh um, on, Saturday, on Saturday, on Friday after the debate. I want to play that, and then um, we, we obviously have some questions for you on the other side. Sure. This is the president Friday in Raleigh, North I Carolina. I don't deba debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. I know, I know, I know right from wrong. <laughs> and I know how to do this job. I know how to get things done. And I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. Strong and resolute Biden there. Um, yesterday, after that time was played um, and, and that event happened, a number of not just reporters, but some strategists said this is great and good, and this was better for him than the debate night, but more people saw the debate than saw this. So what do you say to folks that say, mm, rally, what he did in North Carolina is good, but it's not enough to reassure voters? Well, as you know, a debate is one moment in a campaign, and the reality is that I think voters experienced this debate a little differently than perhaps some of the insiders did. We were looking at a lot of research. Other people were looking at ongoing research as well during it. And voters actually focus on issues that are important to them. So, you know, I think that what you will see, as, as, um, as you often see after these debates, are not huge changes. The president's going to continue to be out there, and he's going to make his case for why Donald Trump is a threat to this country and why there is a better path ahead for America. And, in, and it's an America where everybody's included, where everyone has an opportunity, and where the federal government is not seen as an instrument of retribution and revenge, where you don't have a dictator on day one, where you have a true democracy, where people can disagree, but at the end of the day, we all come together behind certain basic American values. So that's what he is going to continue to talk about, and he will draw that contrast, as he did yesterday in North Carolina, as he did in the debate and as he will moving forward. I think a lot of reaction, and I appreciate the point about the, the insider class, the, the Beltway community yeah. of polls and, you know, officials who, who look at this uh, through jaundice lens, actually, and, and the voters out there, and the polling seems to show that. Right. Um, despite a very, very poor performance, the president has seemingly held his own in the eyes of folks across the country. Eric Holder, um, our former attorney general, noted, uh, cut Biden loose. He, he put out a tweet, let Biden be Biden, cut him loose. And let, and let him fight and always, always consider the alternative. I happen to agree with Eric Holder. I think, um, in my estimation, Anita, that the president was ill-prepared for the gentleman standing opposite him, um, didn't need to have all the data points. What he needed to do was look at uh, the president and say, you're a liar and just then look at the camera and say, he's a liar, and reinforce those narratives that you talk about around those issues, that what I'm telling you is about the future, what he's telling you is a lie. Is that going to be part of the recovery of this, to sort of, to Eric's point, get the president out there, show Donald Trump to be the liar and charlatan that he is, both as in his personal capacity as a candidate and as he was as a president? So, Michael, that's a great point. I think what you saw in North Carolina yesterday was exactly that, mm -hmm. which was, here's who I am, here's what I believe, here's who he is. And, you know, I think it's being lost on a lot of reporters in the chattering class that Donald Trump turned in a performance in which three times he refused to say he would accept the results of this election. Mm -hmm. He had three opportunities to say that, where he... You know, um, showed exactly who he was. And this, you know, the bullying, the yelling, the bragging, all of that was on full display during this debate. And I think that the president, 
you know, came across as someone who is interested in issues. You know, some of the things that he talked about, that people really are concerned about child care, for mm -hmm. instance. It's a huge issue in this country. If anyone who's had to pay for child care knows, it's a huge issue in this country. So I, I think that, you know, the president is who he is. He does believe the American people have a right to know what he's done and what he's going to do moving forward. But he also believes the American people need to understand the contrast. And if you saw him yesterday in North Carolina, if you, as you'll see him over the next several weeks on the campaign trail, that's what he's going to be doing. I appreciate the distinction yeah. between voters and the chattering class. What do you say to members of the House of Representatives, Democrats, who are on the phone with reporters saying that the president needs to step down? We're basically saying the president is the only person out there who's ever beaten Donald Trump, and he will do it again. You know, and we're all going to work together on this. I thought that Governor Shapiro. Those from seem like kind words that you were using with us. I wonder if the words are quite so I kind. I would always be kind to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, because uh, there are. I mean, I have. We've all talked to a number of you know the, the, the folks in the media, but also to Alicia's point, elected officials, um, some um, strategists and operatives, not who work for the president, but people outside who say. The Biden team got it wrong, that they are, uh, someone said to me yet, just yesterday evening, they're arrogant, they think they know better, and look at what he did on the debate stage. And so, w what is your response to those folks who say, you all, the, the Biden campaign people said that they know what they're doing, and then Joe Biden went on the biggest stage that he had prior to um, convention and fumbled the ball? They're well, being very critical. Well, that's a shock, Simone. <laughs> <laughs> that has never happened to the Biden operation the entire time I've been involved in it. You know, I thought Barack Obama put it best yesterday, and I well remember being on sets like this in 2012 after the first debate that he conducted. He said bad debates happen, okay? And bad debates do happen. Good debates happen. As the president said yesterday, maybe it wasn't, you know, maybe he isn't as great a debater as he used to be. I would just tend to say it wasn't his greatest debate, but it is 90 minutes in a in a campaign and in an administration where he has achieved enormous things. So maybe it wasn't a great debate, but he has been a great president. And that is the case he's going to take to the American people and the campaign will take. And we will contrast it with where Donald Trump wants to lead this country. Because, you know, one of the things that's amused me about the coverage here has been, oh, Trump lied the entire time and he really showed how unhinged he is and how he has no plans for the future that don't involve taking away people's rights, that don't involve using the federal government as an institute. Uh, institution of revenge and retribution. But hey, we didn't like Donald. We didn't think that Joe Biden, you know, could win a Tony Award off of his performance. So I think there is a, an issue here of what's really important to voters, because voters get to make these decisions. I would say Joe Biden got over nearly 3,900 delegates as he goes into this convention that were elected by voters in a democracy. And that, and that as we move forward, Obviously, he's going to, it is up to him, it's up to our campaign to make the case. We know that, okay? We know that it is up to us to make the case for his reelection, but more importantly, for where this country needs to go in the future. And that is a critical piece of this. So let's do a little bit of strategery. Yep. Uh, and my favorite Bushism. Uh, because I think, I think at the end of the day, Anita, you and I sort of, sort of cut in that back room sort of looking, okay, how do we move the pieces in mm -hmm. the, on the chessboard? You've got David Plouffe um, saying, uh, 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 Obama's uh, campaign, former campaign manager saying, we're at DEFCON 1. All right, so that means DEFCON 1, you got to pay attention. Yep. The, the, the interesting aspect of the DEFCON 1 position is that you had this, the day before this debate, Adam, Adam Kinzinger come out and endorse Joe Biden, and there is a concerted effort to get Republicans of uh, of sane mind uh, to come and stand with uh, Joe Biden in in this fight for our country. Yes. How does that performance affect that work, and what level of strategic cleanup do you need to do to reassure? Uh, those who are going to be a part of this coalition that needs to come together, very much like it did in 20, to stand with this president that what they saw was an aberration, not a, a thread that you can continue to see pulled on and have, you know, a problem with. So I think that that is a great point. People like Adam Kinzinger, people who are willing to, who have been willing to stand up to what your 
poli former political party mm -hmm. has become and where it is going are extraordinary human beings. I respect the Trump people, former Trump people, former Republicans who have stood up to say, this is unacceptable, this is not what my party is, this is not what my country is, an enormous amount because of the abuse that those people take and really the fear some of some people have mm -hmm. in terms of standing up and telling the truth. And, you know, clearly it is on us to reassure those people that this is a presidency, a president and a campaign that they want to align with, understanding they're not going to agree with Joe Biden right. or this administration right. on a lot of issues. And, you know, one thing about Joe Biden that I think we all know is he is not someone who's going to say, if you don't agree with me 100 percent, you're not invited in. Right. He's someone who believes in that broad coalition, that Big Ten, and in people who disagree with him. So I think that it is up to us to say to those people, here's the plan, here's what we're going to do, and for the president to go out and make the case. This is really at the end of the day, as Eric Holter said, for the president to go out and be Joe Biden. All right. I know yeah. we are out of time, yeah. but I yeah, mean, we would be remiss if we did not ask because the, you all did not have any kind of conversations about, oh, should Joe Biden drop out of this race? Simone? You worked with us. I know. I right. know. I, I talk well, we you can. right here. So we, I was like, we might as well ask because people are, there are lots of people chattering that you did. And I'm like, well, is let's ask Anita no? Dunn. Is that a yes or no? No. The conversation that we had is, okay, what do we do next? Mm -hmm. Okay. That is, if there's one thing that we're about, it's, okay, as Barack Obama said, bad debates happen. We had a bad debate. What do we do next? And you know, the president above all is focused on what do we do next? What do I need to go do? And I think you saw in North Carolina, he knew exactly what he needed to do yesterday. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.